everyone. Thank you for coming to our virtual talk. My name is Lauren Emerson and I am co-presenting with Robin Thady on our assessment of whether bird shades UV reflective film reduces the risk of bird window collisions. One billion birds die annually due to window collisions, making window collisions one of the most significant sources of human-caused bird mortality in the United States. Thus, there is a demand for anti-collision technology but in order for this technology to be readily accepted by the public, it needs to be aesthetically pleasing. Previous solutions such as horizontal frit patterns, as shown in the picture below, are highly visible to the human eye. Therefore, there is still a need to develop effective solutions that are not as visible to humans. Bird Shades has created a UV reflective film which appears as a slight blue tint to the human eye, but should offer a solution to window collisions. As a bird flies towards a treated window, as you can see on the right side of your screen right now, this otherwise invisible surface appears opaque as UV light reflects off the film. Since most birds are able to see into the UV portion of the electromagnetic spectrum, this film should alert the bird and allow the bird to alter its flight pathway, avoiding a lethal collision. Our aim with this study was to determine whether bird shades UV reflective film reduces risk of collision in two songbird species specifically. In order to test this question, we released birds into an outdoor flight tunnel where they approached a building structure containing two windows. Our first treatment condition presented birds with a forced choice in which one window is lined with bird shades ultraviolet reflecting film and the other is lined with control film, similar in all spectral properties except for the reflection of UV light. We equally assigned each film type to both the left window and the right window to avoid any side bias that could influence our results. However, the forced choice treatment may not be entirely representative of what a bird would be likely to encounter on a real building, since typically all windows on the same structure would either be treated or untreated. Because of this, we also included a control-only condition in which both windows are lined with control film, as well as a treatment-only condition in which both windows are lined with UV film. Our study organisms consisted of 24 lab-raised zebra finches, and 18 wild-caught brown-headed cowbirds, both of which are able to see into the UV spectrum, making them good representatives for many other songbirds. These birds were released into a flight tunnel, which you can see diagrammed here. The flight tunnel consists of a dark release tunnel, which encourages birds to fly towards the light in this outdoor flight corridor. Within this corridor is the window structure, which is situated behind a mist net to prevent any actual collisions from injuring the birds. All flights are recorded on two GoPro cameras. These recordings are used to determine whether a bird is likely to collide with a window, if its final trajectory upon hitting the mist net is directed towards one of the windows, or to avoid a collision if it changes course to fly around the structure. Here's an example of a bird flight from our left camera angle. As you can see, this bird flies into the mist net directly in front of the right window, so we would score this flight as a collision with the right window. From here, using Argus video analysis software, we are able to combine the tracks of each bird's flight from multiple camera angles to generate information about its velocity and trajectory in three-dimensional space. We found that in forced choice trials, collision events occur more frequently with control windows than treatment windows. This is true for both zebra finches, which experience 91% fewer collisions with UV-treated windows, and for cowbirds, which experience 75% fewer collisions with treated windows. Furthermore, in non-choice trials, we found that collision events are less likely to occur when both windows are treated versus when both windows are lined with control film. Zebra finches experience 50% fewer collisions with both treated windows, and cowbirds experience 30% fewer collisions. Finally, we observed that birds have a lower overall velocity when approaching treated windows versus control windows. Although velocity decreased across the duration of the flight in all cases, Zebra finches flew 25% more slowly overall when both windows were treated, and cowbirds flew 25% more slowly on average when at least one window was treated. To sum this all up, bird shades has shown to be an effective solution within a flight tunnel environment. Collision risk and velocity were both reduced in the presence of the UV reflective film. We do recognize that we should also test the efficacy of these films within a field environment. Though we did not conduct these trials within a field environment, we still expose birds to ecologically relevant conditions. We made sure to simulate proper lighting conditions with artificial light on the interior of windows and natural daylight on the exterior of windows. In addition, we incorporated non-choice treatments into our study design. 
because it's not likely that a bird would have to make an instantaneous choice between two windows in the same building within a field environment. Our study is unique in that we included quantitative measures, in our case velocity. This can allow us to not only determine collision risk, but mortality risk as well. These measures are also much less subjective in comparison to the avoidance collision scoring, which you typically see in the collision literature and that you saw earlier in our talk. We hope that some of these methods will be implemented in the future in both the development of deterrence technology and in furthering our understanding of what influences risk in the first place. Our overarching goal here is to reduce window collisions. Bird window collisions create human wildlife conflict and a conservation concern, which could have lasting effects on bird populations. It's important that we take the steps to mitigate this large risk. We would like to thank John Swaddle, the head of this work, as well as Timothy Boycott, one of our co-authors, Brennan Jackson for all of his Argus expertise, the IBIS Lab Group, and lastly, Sally Mullis and Lyra Swaddle for their help in the flight tunnel. We will gladly take virtual questions.